When was the last time you listened to a web page? Carol McKinney Highsmith, born Carol Louise McKinney on May 18th, 1946. I just used a screen reader to navigate through this page here. There are many kinds of screen readers which use synthesized speech to, well, read aloud the text that appears on a computer screen. Screen readers are incredibly helpful for people with a wide range of vision impairments, allowing them to more easily use their computers and to browse the web. In this tutorial, I'll teach you the basics of using VoiceOver, a popular screen reader for Mac OS, so that you can more comfortably use it to test your web pages. VoiceOver is available on iOS and on Mac OS, but we'll be focusing on Mac OS for this lesson. And while VoiceOver works well in both Chrome and Safari, let's stick to using Safari for this video. Let's get started. In Safari, click on the menu labeled Safari, choose Preferences, and then click Advanced. In the Accessibility section, click the Press Tab to Highlight Each Item on a Web Page checkbox. Now, let's open our page in Safari by browsing to this URL on CodePen. Let's turn on VoiceOver. Press Command F5. Your Mac may expect you to hold the Function key before pressing the F5 key. VoiceOver on Safari, CodePen, an introduction to VoiceOver window, CodePen, an introduction to VoiceOver web content as keyboard focus. You just heard VoiceOver announce that Safari was open, and then read the name of the page we are on. Now, let's turn VoiceOver off by pressing Command F5 again. VoiceOver off. That's right, the same shortcut is used to turn VoiceOver on and off. Now, let's turn on VoiceOver with Command F5. Then, press Control Option A and listen to VoiceOver read the page. Heading level one, a few words about Carol Highsmith. By link, photography fan. After listening for a bit, press the Control key to pause VoiceOver. February 4, 2000. Then press Control to resume. 1020. Carol McKinney Highsmith, born Carol Louise McKinney on May 18, 1946. VoiceOver off. After listening for a bit, press Command F5 again. Now, as VoiceOver reads, you might have noticed that it announces important information. Heading level 2, early career, heading level 3, broadcasting. In 1976, Highsmith moved to Washington, D.C., and spent six years as a senior account executive for radio station, Link, WMAL, while taking classes at American University, voiceover off. This is how voiceover communicates the structure of the page, and lets the listener know what they can interact with. Start voiceover again with Command F5, and start tabbing through different items on the page with the Tab key. Tab all the way to the bottom of the page, and then turn off voiceover with Command F5. Link, Oktoberfest. Your name, edit text, sign up for our newsletter. Your email, required, subscribe button, sign up for our newsletter. You are, Link, Soviet Union, Maine, voiceover off. As you saw in the example, voiceover reads out the text for all hyperlinks as well as the input field and button name for the form. That's why it's so important to use descriptive text for links and good names for your form elements. A link called click here or a button named button1 will not be helpful to anyone, and especially confusing to people who might be using a screen reader. Now let's try out an incredibly powerful voiceover feature, the rotor, which lets the user quickly jump to specific page elements. Let's try it out. Start at voiceover with command F5, and then open the rotor with control option U. No items in articles menu. You can select different categories in the rotor by pressing the left or right arrows on your keyboard. For example, browse left or right until you reach the Headings menu. Links menu. Headings menu. Now, browse left or right until you reach the Landmarks menu. Form Controls menu. No items in Web Spots menu. Landmarks menu. Developers and designers can use landmarks to help identify the different kinds of content on a web page, like the main content area, the search form, and so on. Now press the down arrow to select the first complementary item and press return. Main. Complementary. You are currently in a group. You've landed on the newsletter form. It's marked up with an aside element, which is why it's listed as complementary in VoiceOver's rotor. Now open the rotor again with Control Option U. Landmarks menu. Press down to select page footer content information. Main. Com complementary. Page footer content information. Then press return. You are currently on a content information inside of web content. Now you've jumped down to the footer. The rotor is an incredibly powerful way to quickly jump between different parts of a page's structure. Once you get more comfortable with voiceover and with testing your designs in it, you'll be equipped to make your designs more accessible and beautiful for many more people. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to check out the other Take 5 videos as well as the entire course catalog here at Gymnasium.